Each year, there are hundreds of bear encounters in the United States. Hikers, photographers, hunters, everyone gets their fair share of the encounters. In 1992, bow hunter Mark Matheny, now owner and president of UDAP Pepper Spray, learned firsthand the power and speed of our nation's apex predator, the grizzly bear. Mark's harrowing encounter was recreated as a cautionary tale for a national audience on the Versus Network's Dangerous Game program. Even a brown bear will generally keep his distance from humans. An attack, though, is always possible. It's never certain what triggers one. It may be a sow defending cubs or a boar his kill. Often for the human, it's simply the wrong place at the wrong time, which makes bear repellent a must. For Mark Matheny, the end of a successful bow hunt for mule deer in Montana turned into a horrifying lesson on the value of bear repellent. We were hunting about 15 miles outside of Yellowstone Park. We had taken a nice four-point mule deer buck up there during our elk hunt. And we were coming down the trail. Uh, Fred was about 20 yards behind me and uh, come over a little knoll and I caught movement off my left. Something just kind of flying through the air horizontally. And next thing I know, I, I see this, this bear just wolfing coming at me, just thinking this isn't happening. Because most of the time you, you see the bears and they're going the other way, but this thing's just accelerating like instantly speed and coming right at me. Well, I looked for a tree to jump up into. Uh, it was just thick branches, nothing climbable. And I did what you're never supposed to do from a bear. I turned around and I ran back towards my partner that was coming down the trail and I said, it's a bear, get your spray. And the problem with that is that just increases that prey chase mode. And it's really tough. You say you shouldn't ever do that, but you just react. You want to get out of this locomotive's way. I threw out my bow in front of me and just yelled at her. Get out of here! She whacked that down with one paw. And next thing I know, this bear is on me. And now she's got my head in her mouth and she's changed my life. And I'm thinking, oh God, help me. And then I'm hoping Fred will help me out. So I yell, she's got my head, she's killing me. And that's when she put the power bite on me. She hit me very hard then and put a tooth through my skull right up above my temple. And uh, I thought my time on earth was finished. This is it, time to meet my creator. But Fred came out and came yelling at that bear she released me, and she dove at him and just bulldozed him right down this flat. And I'm seeing this as I'm crawling away as fast as I can crawl, just thinking, you know, this is bad. She's getting both of us. I mean, I was moving across that ground, which was probably a good thing, because now that I distracted the bear off of Fred and this bear's going, hey, this mouse is getting away, and here she comes again. She pounces on me. I just never forget the weight of that bear. And she grabbed my arm and she just started shaking. And I thought, this is what it feels like to be tore apart. Fred uh, found his can of pepper spray. It worked, luckily. The next thing I really remember is Fred saying, Mark, are you okay? The bear's gone. He came over and helped me up. I was having difficult seeing because of the blood running off my head. And uh, this idea came into my head and I said, Fred, you should take a picture of me like this so people can see what the bears can do to you. I really believe because of the hand of God and a friend and pepper spray, I'm still here and able to tell you about this. An attack like this is enough to change your life. And Mark was no exception. He'd seen the results of what just a small amount of pepper spray could do to stop a bear from finishing the job on him. He quickly realized he could help others by spreading the word. Well, I'm an outdoorsman and uh, I enjoy hunting and fishing and camping and I raised my family that way and I did not uh, want this, this attack to create a fear for me not to be able to do that anymore. And so I had to, you know, figure out how I'm going to protect myself and stop that from happening again. So I really looked at, you know, the firearms and, and pepper spray. And since pepper spray was used during my attack, uh, it was, uh, you know, for law enforcement, but it was still used and it uh, luckily was enough. I really started doing a lot of research and I created a, a bear deterrent pepper spray that was very powerful. Um, from that, that attack, I, it helped me to do this, and you can bet I was motivated to put out a high-quality product. 
people that use firearms, they still are getting bit up. Bears are hard to stop. This works different than a firearm. It doesn't work the same way. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. I got protection, I got this big rifle. Well, it's, uh, it's really a false sense of security. With a big firearm, you're relying upon the power of that firearm. With bear spray, you're relying upon changing their mind by taking away their keen senses. And I can tell you from a bear attack survivor, it's by far your better way to go. Uh, your uh, bear sprays have been 95% effective in stopping attacks, where firearms are about 55% effective. I'm going to demonstrate uh, the deployment of bear spray. You got a bear coming at you. Uh, 50 feet out, they come so fast. From 50 yards, they can be on you in less than three seconds. So you have to be able to carry your bear spray where you can shoot right from the holster. You have no time to pull it. With bear spray, to activate it, you pull that curl safety clip off. You can, as you can see, you can shoot it with one hand and you push down the tab. And all that anonymization that's going out you want to get your fog out there ahead of time for the bear to run into because they're, they're coming maybe 30, 35 miles an hour when they want to put down a perceived threat and near that perceived threat. So be careful of your limitations on this. Don't start spraying too soon. If it's windy, you have to wait until the bear is much closer. And that's sometimes can be very scary but it's a matter of just getting that bear stopped and still at eight feet away uh, hit that bear in the face like that they turn so fast these bears have traction they're down low to the ground they have a lot of claws and they only go another foot and they're turning and out of there they're just looking to get their sense of smell back we got you covered during the day you know when you're up and about on your feet but uh, how about at night you know, when you're sleeping, there's been um, several people killed that night. And that's a scary thing. And normally your imagination creates a much greater fear than reality most of the time. But I don't want to be up all night because I'm scared. Because my imagination is creating a much greater fear than reality. So I developed a bear shock electric fence. You'd have uh, put this out a few years back, super lightweight. This product only, with batteries, only weighs 3.7 pounds. It'll do your camp uh, area 30 by 30 feet. Uh, it'll run for five to six weeks continuously. And uh, it's a neat thing. Uh, you sleep very, very well. Every little thing helps. Boy, they get shocked by this and they do back flips trying to get out of there. So just wanted to let you know about something that if you haven't heard about it, it uh, retails for $2.99 and uh, it's a great great thing to have thank you udap bear shot udap bear pepper spray wisdom is better than strength be prepared